YouTube Frogs, welcome back to an updated complete guide, this time revisiting a fan favorite support, Kaidahara Kazuha. Last full guide I made on Kazuha was 54 minutes long, and we've definitely come a long way in our guide production videos. I'm aiming for this to be a one-stop shop, condensed and fully accurate on everything you need to know about Kazuha. We'll be covering his design breakdown, optimal build choices for weapons and artifacts, important constellations, utility and team comps, and demonstrating his gameplay capability. Note that a lot of the footage in this guide is from the original recording back when my Coswell was Constellation Zero. Let's dive right into it. So, how does this gentle samurai work? Coswell's base kit is a classic elemental damage booster and beard as inventor debuffer. With direct elemental mastery synergy and built-in mini grouping, Kazuha provides some of the strongest elemental team setup a character can offer. And if you do manage to go all out for Constellation 6, he can double as an elemental main DPS. Now this is all possible due to his Ascension 4 passive, Poetics of Fubutsu. When Kazuha procs a Swirl, he grants the Swirled Element a damage bonus for 8 seconds based on his elemental mastery. 1000 of that elemental mastery grants 40% elemental damage bonus. This also stacks with 4 of your Destined Venerer's set, which debuffs enemy elemental resistance for 10 seconds. So a single Swirl from Kazuha will simultaneously buff your team and debuff the enemy for the Swirled Element. Multiple elemental bonuses can coexist at the same time as well, which is particularly useful for double Swirl techs which we'll get into later. Kazuha's core elemental skill, Chihaya Buru, is well-known jump and plunge. Tap E generates a small vacuum and grants 3 Anemo Orbs before going on a 6 second cooldown. Hold E generates a much larger vacuum and grants 4 Anemo Orbs before going on a 9 second cooldown. Both have relatively strong multipliers at 365, 496 at level 11, and proc as high plunge damage after jumping. His post E plunge damage is Anemo infused and calculated off of his normal attack talent level. So technically, his elemental skill uses both multipliers, meaning his normal attack talent level is not useless. And here we can bring in his other Ascension 1 passive, which grants an additional 200% attack multiplier of the Swirled Element on his plunge attack. This stacks on top of his plunge multiplier, which at level 8 comes out to 349%, bringing the total to 550%. So you may notice, when plunging, after infusing an element, there can be up to 3 instances of damage. One is his raw Anemo damage on plunge attack, which can crit. Second is his A1 passive elemental damage, which can crit as well. And third is a Swirl Tick, which cannot crit. So whether you tap or hold E is dependent on your playstyle, team rotations, and utility of his larger vacuum. His Ascension 4 passive has nearly 100% uptime in either playstyle. Weapons like Sacrificial Sword enable a more forgiving hold playstyle. Elemental Burst, Kazuha Slash. This is his unique whirlwind skill that first absorbs an element following the priority of PHEC, and then slashes, dealing AoE and Nemo damage before leaving behind the elemental whirlwind. The whirlwind ticks 5 times over 8 seconds, dealing Nemo damage and the additional infused elemental damage simultaneously. The multiplier for this skill at level 11 reaches 2000% AoE damage, not counting swirl damage. With a 60 energy cost on a 15 second cooldown, this is a medium expensive burst to maintain, expecting 150-160% to 160 recharge for comfortable uptime. This means that energy recharge swords have a much higher increased value for Kazuha if you aim to have his burst uptime pretty frequently. His normal attack charge attack change will really only be used for Constellation 6 gamers. This talent is still important though, as the plunge attack after a tap or hold elemental skill uses the high plunge multiplier. Now talent priority for Kazuha is kind of at your disposal to be perfectly honest. As an elemental mastery swirler, none of his talent levels increase the damage output that his swirls do. For good practice though, I would prioritize leveling his Elemental Burst first, as it deals a tremendous amount of raw AoE damage on top of proccing reactions constantly. Elemental skill and normal attack talent can be left at whatever you want. I would recommend keeping them equal though, because as I mentioned, they go hand in hand. Every elemental skill uses a plunge attack multiplier. Now that we've broken down how he works, a quick segment on Kazuha's Burst and how he easily and effectively incorporates absorption priority into team rotations. First is the Elemental Infusion Priority, PHEC, which affects the element that's infused to his burst if multiple are present. Pyro over Hydro over Electro over Cryo, with Pyro as the highest and Cryo being the lowest. This is exceptionally valuable for Melt and Vaporize teams like Ganyu and Hydro main DPS. The second important mechanic is his burst being able to simultaneously absorb a different element than his initial slash swirls. So Kazuha's Burst can absorb Element 1, like Bennett's Self Pyro Aura, but also Swirl Element 2 on enemies, like Cryo, for Viridescent Venera, Resistance Shred, and Damage Buff at the same time. This is what that looks like with Bennett and no enemies around. Up 
Other Anima Burst infusions like Venti's Q and Sucrose's Q both launch forward and cannot do this. This is also possible with Barbara, but it's much more precise and not actually that practical to use. So, this interaction allows Melt and Vaporize compositions to be strengthened quite significantly. Hazoa's Burst will absorb that Pyro Aura for consistent Pyro application, but also Swirl off Hydro or Cryo on enemies for the A4 buff and Viridescent debuff. Onto some combo rotation tips to maximize the value of Kazuo's skill set. R5 Sacrificial Sword users. For double E's, make sure to hold E for the first one to maximize that free cooldown reset. For C1 Kazuo gamers, always hold E before bursting. It's a free cooldown reset. And then for general play, hold E if swapping to a main DPS and outputting the rotation. This utilizes the longer downtime better because it will usually be more than 9 seconds before Kazuo is needed back on the field. Tap E if you're using it as a filler skill and your team is waiting on cooldowns to repeat the main rotation. Kazuo is great at using this filler time due to his tap E being on a short 5 to 6 second cooldown, shorter of Constellation 1, granting vertical height to dodge enemy attacks, and displacing enemies with his mini vacuum. So, at this point, we've covered Kazuo's skill design, specific mechanics on his burst, and also ways to optimize his rotation. Now we can build them up, and the first important thing for Kazuo is the balance between an elemental mastery build or an attack crit build. So with Kazuo's base multipliers on his skill and burst being super high, and his Ascension 1 passive benefit an attack crit build. Kazuo being a Nemo element, and then Swirls being a part of the skill burst and Ascension 4 passive benefit an elemental mastery build. So for most players, Kazuo's highest value lies in its Ascension 4 elemental buffing value. It allows for tremendous DPS increase to the elemental members of your party, is part of nearly all insanely high damage per screenshot showcases, and reduces his stat requirement to only two things, elemental mastery and then recharge for burst uptime. And even then, burst uptime is not important for one-shot builds, but it is important for consistent abyss fight rotations. And so his elemental mastery build becomes his most universal, highest utility, and biggest AoE damage build available. This is what most players will gravitate to for their Kazuo. An attack crit build is definitely still an option though. This is for my main DPS dedicated Kazuo gamers who don't care about buffing other teammates and just want their Kazuo to be the shining star. And if you manage the expensive route, Kazuo's Constellation 6 Kazuo turns him into an elemental mastery scaling DPS. And that brings us to a quick overview of his constellations. I normally wouldn't put this category so early in the video, as he is a 5 star, but I think a lot of players are curious about his early constellation value. Constellation 1, 10% cooldown on his elemental skill, making tap E 5.4 seconds and hold E 8.1 seconds. Also, it unlocks the hold E into Q reset without needing the sacrificial sword. It's great for Kozel's personal energy generation, and lower cooldown on his elemental skill is great quality of life for improvised rotations in team comps. It's also more forgiving if you like to spam his hold E. Constellation 2. This is the team-wide 200 elemental mastery buff within his burst whirlwind. It makes him a powerhouse buffer, not only shredding enemy resists, providing ascension 4 elemental damage bonus, but also granting a 200 elemental mastery buff very valuable for amplifying reactions like melt and vaporize. This is basically Sucrose's main elemental mastery transfer benefit, but as an added bonus in Kazuo's constellation. This also makes his burst uptime infinitely more valuable and his 160% recharge recommendation much higher priority to hit before other stats. This is where Kazuo's constellation value tapers off, for those that are curious. Constellation 3 and Constellation 5, plus 3 levels to elemental skill and burst respectively. Constellation 4, flat refund of energy meaning a further improvement to his recharge and synergizes well with Constellation 1. This reduces his ER recommendation from about 160% to 140 to 150. Constellation 6, this turns Kazuo into a Nemo main DPS. With his other constellations, the 5 seconds of a Nemo infusion can be maintained at nearly 100% uptime. Build path for Constellation 6 main DPS changes a little bit as well, because Elemental Mastery now scales into a Nemo slash plunge damage at a conversion of 100 to 20%. So a 500 Elemental Mastery C6 Kazuo automatically gains 100% additional normal charge plunge damage, the equivalent of 2 Elemental Goblets worth. There will be a section in Artifacts for this for an updated build path. Okay, let's go over build recommendations. So for Kazuo's weapons, they come in 3 categories. DPS, like attack, crit rate, and crit damage, Elemental Mastery, or Recharge. For most Elemental Mastery build gamers, you only need to focus on Elemental Mastery and Recharge. And for these cases, maximizing team utility is the most important priority. The DPS weapons can be split off for the Kazuo dedicated DPS and the C6 Kazuo main DPS. So, 3 star weapons. 
We have the Dark Iron Sword. This is an elemental mastery weapon just for its raw EM. It's unrefinable, it's a non-gacha type weapon, and it's mostly viewed as a trophy. 4 star weapons. 4 elemental mastery builds. In my opinion, the most valuable are the recharge choices. These weapons have exactly the recommended amount of recharge for him without needing to rely on substats. This means the artifacts can focus strictly on maximizing elemental mastery. So we have Favonia's Sword, which is a 55-60% to 60 recharge secondary stat, which reaches the recommendations and allows artifacts to avoid energy recharge substats altogether. Its team utility passive is also extremely valuable, with the caveat that you'll need Cosmo to crit to proc it. Sacrificial Sword, this is also 55-60% to 60 energy recharge secondary stat. It's more of a selfish quality of life recharge weapon for him, allowing him to double elemental skill and has more orb generation due to that. And then Festering Desire, so this is only useful for the energy recharge stat. I would prioritize using Favonius or Sacrificial. Then we have Iron Sting and Alley Flash, so these are the two elemental mastery options available at 4 star. For elemental mastery weapons, their passives are typically useless for team utility. So the only metric of comparison is their actual raw elemental mastery stat, and the higher the better. So the Iron Sting has 151+, plus, and Alley Flash has 50+. plus. Mine are not level 90, so these numbers aren't their cap. And then last but not least, gotta mention the newest sword from his 2.8 story quest, Kagotsurube Ishin. So this weapon is capped at refinement rank 1, so this is the best it's gonna be. In my opinion, not recommended at all for Elemental Mastery Kazuha since it provides zero Elemental Mastery, zero Recharge, and zero Team Utility. I'd only choose this weapon as an aesthetic option. 5 star weapons. Freedom Storm, this is his signature. It provides the highest EM secondary stat on any weapon, provides a buff for normal charge plunge damage and attack percent for the team on about a 30% uptime. It's a 12 second buff with a 20 second downtime. The only thing that this weapon doesn't grant is energy recharge. So for burst uptime, recharge substance or a recharge timepiece is recommended. Then we have Jade Cutter and Mist Splitter. So these are the only two DPS choices for Kazuo that I'd recommend. Either the super high crit rate from Jade Cutter with a little bit of attack boost from HP, or the crit damage from Mist Splitter Reforge and the elemental damage bonus from Passive. Mist Splitter is the strongest of the two for DPS choices, but do note that Constellation 5 and lower can only proc two stacks of it by himself. You'll need Bennett C6 or Chang Yun for the three stacks due to elemental normal damage, or C6 himself for the Anemo Infusion. And then we have Scoured Blade. This is our 5 star energy recharge sword that basically does only that for Kazuha. If you're running energy recharge, I would only recommend the Favonius or Sacrificial over this for the utility that they grant. So, my personal recommendations for his weapons. If you only care about highest elemental mastery, which means no ER and it's a screenshot build, then we have Freedom Swarm over the Iron Sting over Dark Iron Sword. If you're just looking for a general team utility, then we have Freedom Swarm or Favonius, which needs some crit, or Sacrificial, which resets your skill, they're all up there. Different situations will favor different weapons, they're all useful. And then for elemental mastery builds utilizing his burst, recommended to aim for around 150 to 160 recharge and maximizing elemental mastery. For the DPS weapons, Mist Splitter over Jade Cutter over any 4 star generic crit rate crit damage weapon. My personal cause what does use Freedom Sworn for the maximized EM. Now let's get into artifact setups. So it should be no surprise that 4 of Yerdes and Venner is the setup choice in 99% of Kazwa builds. Whether you're running classic Elemental Mastery build or want to make him a main DPS, Viridescent is the keystone of both paths. Now, always is the problem with these 4P sets, especially with how difficult getting an Elemental Mastery main stat piece can be, don't be ashamed to use 4 star pieces as you're building up. 4 Viridescent is way too important for both increased swirl damage and resistance shred that the downgrade from 5 star to 4 star artifact in an Elemental Mastery setting is only losing 47 raw EM. Now for my early players who are still struggling getting their first full Viridescent set, you can make do with any of these two-piece options. We have two-piece Viridescent with Wanderers or Instructors or just generic attack percent for the raw damage. Wanderers and Instructors grants 80 Elemental Mastery. And then niche gamers looking to do Elemental Skill resets on Kozawa may run four-piece Thundering Fury for the memes. For my early game players, four-piece Instructor is your best friend. Alright, main stat choices. So for EM build Kazwa, if you care about his elemental burst in your team rotation, 150 to 160 recharge is your first priority. After that, maximizing EM is all that matters. Now if you don't care about his burst, you can aim for the 1000 EM plus Kazwa. And then if you're running DPS builds, they follow the standard attack and emo crit, the exception for C6. So C6 allows you to modify the build to substitute an Emo Goblet in favor of EM since 187 EM, which is a main stat for a plus 25 star, with C6 
is already a 37.4% normal charge plunge damage bonus alongside the swirl boost. This is of course optional and really depends on your stats. And again, remember that swirls cannot crit and they are unaffected by attack or anemo damage. And elemental mastery does not reflect the raw multiplier and crit damage. These two stats can coexist, but the damage they contribute to is separate. All right, here's my recommendations for Kazuha build layouts. We have the balanced EMER builds. This is 150 to 160 recharge with about 700 to 800 EM. We have triple EM with a recharge weapon like Favonius or Sacrificial, or we have ER timepiece with EM goblet and mask. That's with an EM weapon, Freedom Sworn or Iron Sting. Then we have the pure elemental mastery build, which is reaching 900 to 1000 EM only. Don't worry about recharge in that build. That's a triple EM with an EM weapon. Then we have C0 to C5 DPS Kaza, which is a standard attack anemo crit or EM anemo crit. So then we have C6 DPS Kaza, which is a little bit of an edit off of the C0 to C5 DPS. We have attack EM crit or we have EM attack crit, or you can run attack or EM on the timepiece and then anemo and then crit. All right, so then stat recommendations. Again, 150 to 160% recharge with 700 to 800 plus EM on a balanced support build. 900 to 1000 plus EM on a pure EM build. The DPS build has no real requirements, just stack attack and crit and have fun. Personally, I run the max elemental mastery plasma build most of the time, which you can see I have 1050 EM. Occasionally, I might bring out the C6 DPS. All right, so how do team comps look? As an elemental buffer, Kazuha can exist as a standalone anemo support on nearly any team comp that focuses on dealing elemental damage. We have Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Crowd DPS, they all fit under this massive umbrella. And alongside other buffers, Kazuha is the go-to support for massive elemental damage showcases and damage per screenshot builds. I specifically mention elemental damage because Kazuha does not assist C6 Eula one-shots, which is physical damage. So, for the Kazuha and Bennett Infusion Synergy Duo, these Melt and Vaporize teams gain immense value from Kazuha's burst uptime. Melt Ganyu, composed of Ganyu, Kazuha, and Bennett, plus one, which is usually Zhongli for his shield so that Ganyu doesn't get interrupted during his charge shots, this team focuses on Kazuha's Pyro Burst Fusion with Swirling Cryo to buff Ganyu's damage. Then we have Vaporized Tartak. Composed of Tartak, Kazuha, Bennett, and Shangling, this team focuses on maximizing both Tartak and Shangling's damage for continuous reverse vaporizes from Shangling and buff Tartak Hydro damage. Then we have Electro Elemental Damage, for example, Raiden Shogun Carry. We have Raiden, Kazuha, Bennett, and Sara C6. So this team comp focuses on maximizing Raiden's DPS while she also refunds energy for the entire team. We also have Crow DPS, most notably in freeze compositions, for example, Blizzard Ayaka Carry. We have Ayaka, Kazawa, one AoE Hydra like Mona or Kokomi, and then double Cryo like Shenha, Ganyu, Rosaria, or Diana. And then we have an additional comp maximizing Ayaka's screenshot damage, which is Ayaka, Kazawa, Bennett, and then Mona. So those are the standard team examples from each of the elemental departments. We also have the standard national team comp comprising of Bennett, Xiangling, Xingqiu, or Yelan, and then Kazawa. And then lastly, Kazuha is a unique enabler for mono-element team comps. So these type of team comps forego reactions completely and strictly rely on Kazuha to buff an entire team of one element. Mono Pyro is typically the most popular for this category as most Pyro DPS are just raw damage dealers. Now for a bit of gameplay showcases, featuring some of the compositions that we previously described. These showcase clips are older when I originally had a Constellation Zero Kazuha, with a sprinkle of some damage per screenshot showcases. Kazuha's build will be a mix between the Elemental Mastery and Ele Energy Recharge, and pure Elemental Mastery. Cue the music, Mr. Cope.
So, what do I think about Kazuo? Just an insane 5 star all around. His team utility is insane, he's insanely fun to play, he has flexible build paths, and he enables so many compositions to reach their highest potential. No constellations are needed, but if you are lucky enough to grab some, the early ones don't disappoint. And that about wraps up the updated Kazuo guide. Hope you guys enjoyed and are now masters of how Kazuo works. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all Kazuo wanters become Kazuo havers. Thanks as always for watching, don't forget to like if you learned something, and as always, we'll see you next time. Take care.